All right, we should be live now. Okay. Just making some last minute adjustments to the frame, but we're good. All right. All right. Hello, and welcome to NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Mariam. Episode two. I'm Rowan. I'm Mariam. Thanks so much for watching, listening, tuning in. Yes. Uh, uh, drink up. You have some things you need to do? Or? Yes, I'm gonna do some things just to check that everything is going well. Well, Rowan will entertain you. Okay, so for those of you who, this is the first time tuning in, if any, um, NHS for Lefties is a three-part series where we answer um, anonymous questions from people that submit via the Curious Cat link, which you can also find on Mariam's profile, about love, lust, relationships, dating, sex, gender, all the things that, you know, aren't necessarily, like, cool to talk about in, like, the lefty scene, but are super fucking important for, like, emotional happiness, like, real solidarity and, like, you know, a happy life. So, um, we came to this idea after realising how important it is to have these conversations and how we're so worried that a lot of men in particular don't have a place where they can ask these kind of questions and that as Mariam says, is being co-opted by the Jordan Petersons of the world. And we want to reassure you, you're not lobsters and we can help. Maybe. Um, <laughs> neither of us are... I mean, we're experts in the way that everyone is and that we've had these experiences and we like to think critically about our experiences and about other people's experiences and thoughts and emotions. And we just want to kind of provide a space where we have an honest discussion about the kind of issues that concern people in our generation in our lives and this time in history yes thank you brilliant and again thank you so much everyone for the questions that you mm -hmm. sent in last time around we kind of got, got quite good feedback everyone mm -hmm. was all the people very were, good feedback yeah yeah they were <laughs> they thought that they got good tips so we're thankful very much for that um and yeah we've got three new questions now and um yeah we're quite excited to tackle them they're, they're a bit more complicated this time around mm -hmm. a bit longer but yes Yes. Also, please let us know if there are any issues with um, yeah, audio or video. Uh, this is our, we moved, as you can see, because the internet here is a bit better. Sorry, talking technicalities. But, um, you know, if there are any glitches, let us know. There's no one behind the camera. This is a low budget situation, but we'll try and catch, to catch you. I'll be checking things on the, on the Twitter for as much as I can. Is this a bit distracting for you, seeing yourself? No, or is it's it okay? fine. I like seeing myself. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is, um, tell, yeah, tell us about technological issues, but also if we say something that you don't agree with or that you think we handled in like a not perfect way or whatever, please do let us know because we're, we're, we're still learning as well, just like everyone else. So Yes. Thank you so much for watching us instead of uh, the Brexit debate. Well, even the vote right now, actually. I totally forgot that was happening. happening yeah, it's literally a historical day. But anyway, yeah, so guys are but so us. is this. <laughs> yes, exactly. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I've asked you, you haven't seen it just yet today, but today, like, the internet was exploding about uh, this Gillette ad. Uh, that was that's basically all about Gillette's attempt at... Um, I guess educated men about me, men about masculinity. Mm. Uh, I thought it was actually quite sensitively done. And usually I'd be like, I can't believe you use social issues to sell your product. No, but I've seen good feedback. Like on Teen Vogue, they were very, which you know is a great resource. They were very like complimentary of it. They said like the tackling of toxic masculinity, like post Me Too, done well. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. So so this is interesting as well. That I feel like again those issues are being sort of brought a bit more to the forefront and I feel like we're a part of that yeah. so that's really good we wouldn't necessarily say buy Gillette but we would say watch the ad <laughs> yes yes exactly <laughs> um, and also we've received some feedback that perhaps we should be uh, referring to the questions a bit more throughout so we will be trying and doing that um, but we do sometimes get distracted by talking away. about issues yes, because yes because we relate with the questions as well we're like oh remember this and I remember that although however we must also stress that we have do not discuss the the answers beforehand. Yes, no. So I just I see the questions and I send the screenshot to Rowan and then we're silent about them. And um, today, yeah, again for the first time, I will hear what you think about them. Yeah. Okay. So shall I read out the first question? I think so. Um, so we hinted to this question at the end of last uh, week's show because we wanted to get more information about it because it's not in our forte. So it says, "Got a question for the NHS. What are your views on men who pay for sex? 
I attended a talk at TWT. Uh, the World Transforms. The World Transforms. The Labour Party uh, Shadow Festival uh, that happens next to, next to the conference okay. every year. So I attended a talk at TWT last year on sex work, and a panel argued that the most appropriate leftist view on sex work is that it should be treated like all other work, and that sex workers should be entitled to respect, workers' rights, and good working conditions. What wasn't really discussed was how John's so like clients should be viewed in this dynamic. I have paid for sexual services, been to strip clubs, paid escorts, etc. before uh, before I was p- politically educated, and now I'm not sure how I feel about it. One of the panellists said she needed her clients' money and appreciated being treated well by them, but at the same time, in an ideal world, wished she'd had another means to earn the kind of money that she did via sex work. I appreciate it's a thorny issue. Thanks for doing this. Yes, yeah, so as you can imagine, we, uh, well, you may not imagine, I don't know, basically we are, we are not uh, involved in, 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 in sex work in a, in a practical manner, so mm-hmm. what we decided is that we should not only just do some research, but actually talk to people that are, and perhaps, you know, if, if they could uh, very generously let, let us know what their opinions on this is. Yeah. Again, there's a spectrum of opinions, we've asked certain people, we didn't ask others, and perhaps they would have other, another uh, idea. Again, we were extremely thankful that they even gave us their emotional labor, mm-hmm. and in general, labor, as, you know, answering us questions. Yes. yes, and so the sort of general feedback that we received, uh, should I start? Yeah. Might as well. uh, first of all, it's great that you even went to the TWD TWT panel, it seems like you are a conscious consumer as it is, you know, so that you are interested in these discussions. Again, as many as there are sex workers, there are different views as to how this should be tackled. And also there, there's different law in different countries as well. So, for instance, uh, the, I, I, I think that the general consensus with the, with the sex workers that we've discussed here in Britain is that they don't necessarily agree with the Nordic model in the in 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 the Scandinavia, no. where uh, actually it is the it is the the, the, the the consumer, the client that, that and they are the ones getting criminalized. Um, but actually, as a as a result, this becomes the, the profession itself becomes way way more difficult for and for unsafe. Themselves. And unsafe as well. Uh, I, yeah, I, I know that this this is like as a, as a it is being used as an excuse to to battle trafficking. However. Oh, uh, we will post all of the links below because yeah. we've done also a lot of research and we just have quite a few resources now. Open Democracy have this really wonderful, great sort of uh, um, dissection of the Nordic model and how that's not the way to go. So basically, I don't think you should be worried about that necessarily. And it seems like the consensus, at least here in Britain, is that... Yeah, decriminalization is the is what sex workers are fighting for. And if you want to help sex workers in a... In, in a sense, which isn't just in your relationship as a client, there are plenty of sex work organisations in the UK that we all put model, uh, links to that are fighting for decriminalisation and have advice on how you can help from monetary to turning up at rallies and things. Um, yeah, can I, I, I'll give just a few shout outs just in okay, case. Yeah. You know, um, so it's, uh, well, sorry, let's go page. So we have uh, Swarm, then English Collective of Prostitutes. Sex workers opera do lots of cool stuff. Yes, as they're well. very cool. Um, yeah, so um, I mean, I don't know how much conversation there are between these groups as well, but um, also United Voices of the World, uh, one of the really great sm- smaller dynamic trade unions, are looking into unionizing this industry, which mm-hmm. is extremely fascinating. So yeah, so I think we can quite. I guess we can say, get, don't feel ashamed talking about these things. Yeah. Um, can I please, please, please? Okay. So regarding the role of the client, the general consensus among the people we've spoken to who are in these politically engaged sex work organisations or are independent politically engaged sex workers is that it's not really about you, and that might sound kind of harsh, but essentially, respect, politeness, like paying on time. Like, if you are looking at it from a customer service position or like any workers analysis the analysis is never about the customer like as a customer your duty is to be courteous and what we actually care about what our energies go into is organizing workers and workers organizing themselves and so like yes you're, you're saying there aren't things out there for johns maybe because they're don't need to be in that sense. I think like, in the future there will be. I think this is such a such a like new raw and new sort of well, it's not a new profession, but we're looking at it with the technologies that we're being given right now in a lot more 
in a more in a more nuanced yeah, the new, new analysis yes. definitely in the last few years yeah. around like sex work as as work as labor this is a very new field and websites as well you yeah. know they're only getting filled with re resources now that i think in a couple of years will probably be there yeah. you know and because and yeah again it's uh, hopefully this will become a much more legalized industry across the world so all those resources will just appear whereas now you know for understandable reasons it's just a lot of the time illegal as well yeah. to even have those around so i would say like from what we've heard like if you're worried about your position as a client don't be like it is fine to be a sex work cli uh, like client or customer as long as you're like you pay on time you're respectful you're courteous you you respect boundaries you don't contact people after work you know which is i go i go to the lush store and someone's friend beats me and i'm like i'm in love with you so yeah <laughs> Well. But like basically, yeah, I guess respectful post boundaries. There's a really great article as well about cam girls, and mm -hmm. um, that we're also gonna post uh, below that actually do explain how they would like to be treated from yes. the consumer's perspective. But generally, if you care about sex workers' rights as well as being a client, then give your money and your labor to sex work organizations and take a back seat in their struggles. Like. A lot of the ones said that they, they value support and how to support sex workers, but they don't necessarily, they do, right now, they can't necessarily put their energy into providing those services for clients. So if you're yeah. just respectful and polite, and then if you have spare money, give it to the organizations yeah. or the people campaigning. Also, but there's something about thinking like perhaps in the future, again, in like ideal society, there will be, you know, like clients will be writing guides about how yeah how absolutely you should be treating sex workers you know again a lot of the time it depends on the character you know so that's what you know so they sort of give instructions to their clients but they're very character based as well so that's another sort of hurdle um um but yeah sort of uh, and and the thing is is that i know what you're saying in the question about how they uh, how they would rather you know i i suppose uh, work in any other industry um so you know, my easy response, you know, sort of typical response would be like, well, I would rather not be like in a work that I am, you know, be some, somewhere else. That's easy for me to say because there's not a shame, I suppose, and there's not that judgment, I suppose, behind behind my job, I suppose. But I guess that, that's the idea is that with hopefully in the future, that burden will be taken off. Like half of the hurt, well, I don't know. I'm, again, I'm just speculating here and, but from what I can understand is like a lot of the hurdle of being a sex worker comes from actual just judgment the from stigma, your parents, yeah. from stigma, from your parents, from your, you know, for your loved ones and from society in general. So if we can, you know, reduce that, then I think, you know, and honestly, even just being open about the fact that we use sex work or yeah. like we watch porn and stuff yeah. like that, you know, like that's okay. Hopefully that will sort of demystify the profession and, and appropriate, worker um um worker secure like worker protections will be mm. installed and, and just this is a shout out to this person i follow on instagram they're called jack the stripper and uh they are a fantastic um they're a stripper mostly but they're a sex work campaigner and they do these excellent comic book strips about all the questions that people ask sex workers that they don't ask people in other wow. customer services like it will have um, a cartoon of a sex worker talking to a woman in an office and being like, do you really hate your job? Do you need to be rescued? And it's blowing apart the way in which people view, because of stigma, sex work as this entirely different form of labor. And I'm not arguing that it isn't a different form of labor, but also every form of labor is different in its own way and has its own burdens and stigmas and shit parts and good parts. And so, yeah, I just think being conscientious of its placement in a broader scheme of trying to like make make work uh, like good and safe and not exploitative thing. That's the best way you can view it, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just, I'm actually incredibly encouraged. I, I've seen like so much incredible work around this in the past yes. couple of years towards unionization and uh, just some very open benefit parties as well for, for, for different struggles. Um, so sex workers opera, I think they sometimes host the nights at But No Green, but no green Working Man's Club as well. The, like um, info nights or? Even cabarets that are okay. benefit gigs then for for different um, causes or like lawyer work and that sort of stuff in this in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this profession. So, yeah, let's just demystify it and um, and and make sure that you know people, the people that choose to for for this to be their profession feel safe and 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 the respected the same as any other profession. Yes, precisely. Yeah, please follow, send us some follow up questions and yeah. other stuff like I mean if there's. 
if there is anything to do, more uh, to do with that. Yeah, and as we said, we're going to post the links to the resources we've already looked yes. at um, later on on the Twitter so that you can access them as well. Yeah, and yeah, but I'm really great. Even the fact that TWT is hosting a panel on this, yes. that's so cool. Like, that's really cool. And I think more, more stuff like this. Um, yeah, and I think we'll have, hopefully have a lot more sort of ethical, ethical, I guess, clients of, of, mm -hmm. of, of this profession. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. It's, yeah. Sex workers of the world unite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, should we move on to the next one? Okay, do you need to do any fasting? Or? Well, I guess I just might as well sort of see if there are any questions, stuff like that. See how we're looking. Okay, well, if hello, if you're just tuning in, this is um, NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Mariam. Mariam is doing some technical things. Mm -hmm. I am not. Um, we just answered a really great question about sex work and we're going to be posting some resources related to that later on. So keep your eye out for that. And coming up, we have question number two for today, which is quite a complicated one. So yeah, I've said, I made Rowan uh, uh, read out all the questions because I've, I've looked through the replay of the last video and I just I, I don't know maybe because I'm not native speaker I just don't like how I read them and because also it's might as well I might as well be looking at this at the same time so this is what, what we're doing not unless you're not listening sorry no okay. also but yeah I guess we're good like yeah no, we're good I like, yeah I feel like we're good okay yeah all right also let us know if anything is an issue um Oh yeah, but please also give give Rowan a like, uh, and not only a like a follow. No. And, <laughs> yes, I... yes, yes, and 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 look at the. In yeah, I mean, you. Oh, I hope you're I'm done with I what know. I can. You with the, you. Well, because they don't do anything. Rowan is a legend <laughs> and an incredible um, academic comedian, and you should definitely give her a follow. And also, yeah, let other people know. You know, people that you maybe someone's pissing you off about ranting about their relationship too much or about you know someone that they fancy or something which i do all the time to my friends so i really should be writing into my own show yeah we've both thought about writing in <laughs> yeah yeah so please definitely um uh, give us you know give us a shout out to your friends i mean right now we've only planned this for this to be a three episode thing but we'll see how it goes I and mean, we've already got good feedback about maybe doing it at other events which is really we're really grateful and really excited to maybe be taking this further but but i said only if we can drink on stage because that's absolutely was, totally and also in general like i kind of like even now like we're somewhere that's not not our home and i'm like to mm. like be i don't know it doesn't feel as homey well, no it's it definitely got be. a different vibe it's, it's a different vibe but like yeah fuck it yeah I'm we should trackies. i'm, I'm kinda, gonna try and be a bit more chill i yeah. think the booze is helping up <laughs> yeah maybe we're talking too fast as well i think this time <laughs> but you know we always get nervous before these because we you know it's a live production and and these are you know people are really are being incredibly generous with us uh, mm. about yeah know, it's a lot of responsibility their... and we're yeah, really grateful yeah. to have it thank you yes especially since oh i shouldn't be saying this but myself i'm going through stuff right now mm. so so yes yeah, so aren't we all babe of, aren't we all <laughs> i don't feel like i shouldn't be even giving no uh, no nah, nah, nah. well no why we can because Good. we're human and we yeah. are having complicated relationship lives things yeah and the sort of situation that i'm going through right now is nothing to do with like the sort of I guess questions that I'd be receiving, and if I was, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, we may cry on stage. It could happen <laughs> on stage." God, that's me, my comedian persona speaking again. This is not a stage. This is a living room. No, but with with the panel discussions, hopefully, that we'll be doing. Well, there'll not be panel discussions. There'll be like NHS for lefties live, which will be jokes. Yeah, I don't know how that's even gonna like. Do people just shout questions at us? Well, no. I guess again, we'll try and get submissions, but. For instance, just seeing people's eyes and their judgment like that. And that will require a lot of words to get over. Yeah. But so, yeah, stay tuned to see if we're going to be plastered in front of you at some point in the next yeah. few months. Yeah. All right, shall you question number two? Yeah. Okay, you this is... Yeah. yeah, this is a long one. Um, okay, yeah, and we have to be slow, I guess, with this one, okay. because it's quite complicated. Yeah. Okay, question for NHS for lefties. Is it a widespread thing for slightly latent queer tending hetero guys to have a learning relationship with a queer woman's emotional labour input and then default to their more familiar heteronormative relationship, saying it's how they see their long term future? Context. I think the thing is going on with, het with a hetero guy I've been seeing for six months. Like, 
bracket default poly relationship. The guy met someone he was interested in, and once he'd had a couple of dates, including sex, he was besotted with her and felt a liberating rediscovery of his femme-activated heterosexuality. I feel like I read that in a sarcastic voice and I really didn't mean to. Um, I'm neutral. With me, he's been really joyful about exploring a more queer way of being in relationships. I'm a mask of centre queer woman, but has also had this debilitating insecurity about his hetero maleness, including never being dom in bed, despite having warned me up front on our third night together-ish that he was really dominant. Hearing you chat about this shit in your first session was what made me want to send this in for you. Now he wants to stop having sex with me because it's too confusing for him, but to keep all the emotional closeness and intimacy except se sexual stuff. We have pre-acknowledged it's probably going to be awkward, so where's this boner going to go if we're ignoring it, spoons? So except the d gender dynamic in the question, this is a run-of-the-mill relationship going from sexual to friendship scenario, with loads of communication throughout. It's not bad, just the bloke is getting a bit of a jammy deal right now. <laughs> So there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Should we generalize the question a little bit? I suppose. Well, if, if we even can. Go for it. But um, so I guess even the first question I, I think really caps ca encapsulates a certain phenomena that I can openly say I have certainly met, in or I have witnessed in the more radical left queer circles in London at least of a fairly heterosexual straight cis dude um, finding queerness for a little bit <laughs> trying it out with yeah a f few queer people around and then sort of like realizing that that's not their thing and dropping it Happen ha happens with women as well to be fair yes like, that's, yeah 100% yeah definitely but um, I mean maybe that's me I moved to Vienna, became a lesbian, moved back to London. It's like, what? Men everywhere. Uh, <laughs> no, Maybe I'm a fraud. <laughs> no, but you're... Okay, I'm not... Yeah, no, yeah, so we won't go to my <laughs> issues. No, but basically, it's a thing. It's definitely happened. Yeah, it's like, you know, for a couple of, for a couple of months, like, especially sort of... I'm going to say it, fuck it, like, middle class men. <laughs> uh, sort of, it's a bit of a game for them for a couple of months, you know, be queer and dress up a little bit and they sort of, and it disappears. Sorry, I'm sounding harsh, but like, they have broken way too many of my like queer friends' hearts for me to just like, yeah, and yet, that's, this is not necessarily it. It's just that we're saying that this is, there, is, there is a phenomenon like that. The thing with this yeah. phenomenon, no, I'm just gonna, I'm relating to what you just said, is that it's very, very difficult because on the one hand, I, for example, identified as queer long before I had like a lesbian experience, right? And there is this idea that unless you happen to be sleeping with someone of the same sex or gender as you, you, you're not queer, you're just faking it. And so we don't want to endorse the view that you need to like prove your queerness by, and yet, sure. Hang, hang on, I've got the and yet coming. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I think in lefty spaces, there is a, this is like our like maybe bad politics bit, but there is definitely a pressure to not be a straight middle class dude. M macho dude, macho as well, dude. in general. Yeah. And so, and it's a very easy way of making yourself not seem like a straight middle class macho yeah, dude. Social capital, for fuck's sake. So, yeah. And access to spaces. Access to and spaces. Respect. Yeah. Uh, trust. So we're not we're not saying this is the case with your no, well, okay, guy, but actually, it, it, it gave us both these kind of... Yes, he's sort of like a bit alarm alarm. We'll get to the question eventually, but just to sort of like touch on this, because I don't know if we're going to get a question about this in general. And that's something I've been thinking about in, in general. Um, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why we're doing th this show in a sense of like... Um, I understand, especially again, in sort of like radical subcultural left, uh, I guess we have spent a lot of our time at um, starting with the sort of like I guess the punk scene etc uh, you know the sort of the, 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 macho, the macho dude has pretty sexist macho dude was always the sort of the archetype and the, the kind of queer politics that we have seen in the last I suppose five to seven years have been a, a, a push against that mm -hmm. uh, yes. a very very fucking needed push yes. and we're thankful Fantastic, about yeah. that for sure for sure and like definitely uh, have like muddled the waters in the best possible way. Yeah, the increased presence of queer, femme, like, 100%. trans people yeah, in the yeah, scene yeah, yeah, yeah. is, like, a welcome fucking antidote. Yes, 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 that's 100%. Uh, I, I, I will say that I think this has made a few perfectly decent, lovely, natural-looking, but not 
match on the inside dudes that that I know feel quite un unwelcome. Um, um, whereas some of the queer aesthetic folk can be some of the most dominant, controlling, manipulative, flipping, twisted little fucks out there actually. So there was that, yeah, there was a bit of confusion. I think it's all actually water under the bridge. I think it's all kind of changing now. That seems I think to we're be becoming less... a bit more, in, um, there is a much more mature understanding of, of like, um, of what's going on there. It's all on the inside. Performative <laughs> politics and yes. like the pressure to like have an edgy identity is definitely less than it was a few years ago. Wow, you can tell we're on the second drink. We're already using <laughs> No, because of the, what's I great is that like I can't wait to be deleted out of the scene after we press stop. Rock. No, but but the point the point is that like <laughs> there have always like we want the left to be a place to be able to explore their sexual identities, of course, and like their gender identities and their aesthetic identities and all of this stuff. But to use queerness as an excuse for being a bit of an asshole. We're not, we're not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. No. Just like... <laughs> Shockingly. There's, just, there's doing this and there's not doing this. So yeah. So like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So should we, should we get back to the question? Yes. Okay. So that was our mini having rant. Having said all of this, um, we're not... Um, are we implying... We're a little we, bit implied. We're, we're wondering. We're, we're wondering yeah, if wondering. that could possibly be the case with your... It seems got his like cake and eat that it as guy. well, though. Like, yeah, your last line sounds like... Yeah, he is, he is in a jammy situation. Yeah, and in the first one as well, mm. you're like, there, it, there is a phenomenon of that happening, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. I'd say run, but I'm a bit harsh like But the other that, thing is the poly politics, short. right? Like, which is... A different but thing that's an element of it. No, no sex now. Well, cause I guess, but that's the thing. It's like now you have to just like get over this person because they're not going to be wanting to be intimate with you. And that's so difficult, especially when you're so close to them that you're cuddling and you're feeling them, their bits, etc. But like, was it a mutual so agreement? Like, it's not clear whether that was a mutual agreement that you, the questioner, was happy with or you've accepted yeah. and you're not happy with. Because yeah. obviously that's accepting true. a sexual slash not sexual situation that you're not happy with is not okay yeah that like, regardless on, on don't like, do that if you can you're queer regardless of all and i that. get that you might feel like because you don't want to lose this connection that you that you have to do that but like if this isn't a situation that you're also equally ha basically there's two different things going on here yeah i think so okay so on the one hand there's your relationship with him that may or may not be as you want it maybe you also want a more more like cuddly but less sexual relationship in which case great the other thing is that you seem to imply that he's got quite a good situation going on and you're suspect of his his relationship with the poly and the queerness because of this new relationship he has with, with this new woman and that's a different th issue for you to be working with like one is like am i happy with my relationship with him with exactly. the non-sex but am i also am i okay with him dating this girl in this very heteronormative way it's yeah. okay if you're not like i know we're all poly and we're all meant to be like okay with everything but also it's fucking okay to not be okay with yeah. a, a manifestation of your poly relationship just because you're poly doesn't mean you have to be okay with every form his relationship is taking particularly if it makes you feel like his character is changing or he's become disingenuous because of this because that's not about his other relationship that's not about petty jealousy that's about you seeing someone who you thought was ex not being like that anymore and that can be like feel like a betrayal or feel like you don't know them yeah and your confidence drops as well yeah. and then like again it begins to create that loop you know when your confidence is low then that person you know perhaps you're not as fascinating to that person as well but also like yeah there are definitely two things going on here well actually even three things yeah there's the, the there's the the, the, the mesh of the queer identities there is the poly stuff but also in my career relationships one of the best things that uh, has been told to me uh, by well, my partners was like mate like I don't care you know I don't care how many people you're so, you're with as such as long as you're not, not an asshole you're not an asshole to me you know and, and, and really that's sort of what it boils down to like it doesn't matter who you're with uh, well obviously there's communication with that and within that and all that stuff but as long as you're being fulfilled and encouraged by that relationship then like who cares yeah and i think that's exactly what we need to ask here you know whether you feel enough reassurance but now that the sexual part is gone as well i guess that's well, just i think because what's thing. happened is that your relationship with him has changed because of his relationship with her or at least in yeah. conjunction with that and that's that's not good poly politics, really. No. Like, and it seems like it is also, ha well, again, it does have that added uh, queer, um, I guess, layer to it as to, like, oh, I'm actually now more interested in the straight thing. And if that's true of him and he wants this heteronormative relationship and that's all he wants, then he needs to own up and fucking 
break up with you. I, I'm sorry, that sounds really harsh, but like, if he's if he's not actually, you know, like well, whatever, as long as yeah, as long. But the thing is, it's like if if they were making you feel confident and happy, I guess you wouldn't be asking us the question, right? I think you know exactly what to do, and it's really break. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've and all it, been the one to cling on to a relationship that's going down the hill. Yeah, like, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> Some oh. might even be doing that today. Oh. <laughs> no, but I did that for a year and a half and it was the worst thing and ended up ruining my life like in a massive way so I had to leave the country. Shout out if you're listening. Yeah, they cry <laughs> every day and they write and it's bad and it's terrible. Yeah. Like, we're not like the sort of like... Because again, sometimes you read those like agony and questions now that I learned this term, I didn't know what it was yeah. before. You actually told me, uh, you know, oh, you know, uh, just break up with the person. They're not good for you. They're toxic for you. But it's, it's as if it's that easy. Yeah, it's No, not. you're going to go on a, on a bender for a good couple of weeks. You're going to cry and yeah. listen to all of your depressing songs. Your friends are going to be sick of you. <laughs> and I don't know, you're going to think all the darkest or all the darkest things. Having said all this, I have practical advice here, actually. Ooh. Something that... We do that sometimes. No, 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 no. But this is something that has actually worked for me in the past, and um, I've, I've been using this quite a bit, and it's actually quite wonderful. I, I can't say that it helps 100%, but at least a bit of a fix for a couple of weeks. Get a piece of paper and write down 21 reasons why you dislike this person or why what why they annoy you not necessarily situations they could be situations but mostly it's better if they're actual like actual quality traits could be aesthetic things fully as well or like the way they laugh or yeah, the way yeah. they eat yeah yeah apples yeah yeah the way that they treat that friend oh God, like, i could do that to anyone though good <laughs> no but this is good like it really it sort of juggles your, mem- your memory because the thing with the relationships that we always remember the good parts right and the fun parts and how they made us feel in the good sense right and whereas actually yeah it's really important to know and remember that actually the you know that, that these people are not perfect at all, and that we romanticize them, and 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 and, and I think yeah, twenty one reasons why mm. they're actually not that good, or why you hate them even. Um, that has helped me in the past, yeah. and then I just sort of carry that around with me, and uh, for a little bit, for as long as I need to. I always, I also have the strip rule yeah. as well. That I've had that. That I basically, I, I put a strip. Oh, on it's my gone. Hand. It's not gone. Not psychologically. Okay, good. <laughs> no, it just I had a shower. So okay. Uh, yeah, you just like. Don't, don't contact that person. Just just don't. Yeah, and then you basically you keep the strip on for as long as you have to. But basically, it's up to you whether you want to... It sounds like because of various things, including this new relationship, you are not feeling that good about yourself and your queerness and your aesthetic even, maybe, and like as like a more mask person compared to this new person. And also not about your relationship with him. And I just think, yeah, you need to think about, like, it's also, like, honestly, it's also okay if you just want to stay with it because you like him and you oh, can't yeah. deal with it right now. Yeah. Like, Been there you so. know what? Yeah, like, a <laughs> cuddle with someone I like a few times a week is sometimes better than being alone, like, even if it's not ideal. Like, yeah. don't beat yourself up for picking whichever one you pick, but I just really don't want you to feel bad or, like, you're comparing your relationship with him to his relationship with her or your queer aesthetic and identity with like his new like, thing like ideal yeah or, exactly oh, yeah. like because that's shit and you just shouldn't have to do that like yeah so i just i don't know i be yeah, many options i suppose i'd yeah. like to think we've given like quite a few practical but tips i just really feel you and i like wish you a lot of luck because that sounds like a really really tricky situation and i've had my fair share of poly trauma and queer trauma and relationships falling apart trauma like and i i hope we've been helpful if we haven't please send us another question or some follow-up feedback yeah like, for sure but it, again i guess it's also easy for us to, to sort of demonize this 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 dude or whatnot, yeah he's also know? possibly confused and like yeah. we're maybe like making it out like he's not queer and he maybe, maybe he actually yeah. is and he's or just he's like manipulative or whatnot that's also and also it's yeah. okay to be a queer man and and fancy a like straight looking woman yeah, like that is yeah, also yeah, yeah. actually completely fine it's like just, everything is fine he's great actually <laughs> yeah we're, we're a huge fans of him <laughs> okay, that paper. no but basically but, i yeah. understand why you would be making excuses for him and like in in general just sort of like 
what if he is the best thing that's yeah. happened for a long time? You know, can't just say no to that, especially since I have this like whole like YOLO rule, like right, where it's just like if there's a connection that you have with someone, it's fucking dumb to just drop it because life is too yeah. short and we should be with people that we like. Um, and also, like I'm th I'm thinking about my ex boyfriend who I was with for three years, and he was queer, and he always had a lot of trouble with because he mostly dated women because he found women mostly better to get along with and less likely to be assholes shocking i know that, that he felt like his queer identity was like I, i'm speaking for him maybe he doesn't feel like this at all but i think that part of it was like he felt like his queer queerness was somewhat erased or not taken seriously because he was normally dating women oh yeah 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 you yeah, know that's the thing yeah and so there's also that like we don't want to make it seem like he's not really queer, unless you think that he's not really queer. We don't want to make it seem like he's like deliberately being an asshole, unless you think he's deliberately being an asshole. Like, basically, we're, we're yeah. Yeah. No, but I think this is good. Like, I mean, okay, I'm just making. <laughs> I think it's great. I think we're great. No, but basically, I think again, everything that we just said, whether like just as much as it's contradicting. Every, every sentence contradicting each other. I think you probably thought all of this. Mm. You've probably all thought all of this. You you thought the worst, and then you made excuses for him, and and yeah. And, and and yeah, that's exactly what we're doing for you because yeah, we've probably been there. So again, this is also a way for us to um, yeah demystify these sort of situations and yeah. say that this happens in 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 our relationship lives. Like I'm actually amazed that we're we're you know we're, we've got our day jobs then we're trying to do activism and all that stuff and also we're holding all these relationship dramas that no one ever even knows about actually yeah, on yeah top it's just of it everyone all, you know? has yeah. like the personal like emotional trauma going on in the background all all yeah, the fucking all time, the fucking time. Yeah. and like thank you for like opening and sharing yeah. yours with us because yeah. it was like a really nice question and i hope that something we said was useful or hit home please just let us know and we should move on to the next question because we've already been 38 minutes. But it's fun! It's <laughs> great! I don't know. Yeah. Like, we just, I'm kind of but we were, we were told we do focus. deviate a little bit too much. It, no, do you think that's true? Yeah, Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, okay. Hitting the last one. Okay, uh, do you need to do any yeah, faffing? I'm, just the only thing, I'm going to open the curious Okay, stats. I'm going to do the shout out. Hang on a sec. Ooh. Hello, if you're just tuning in to. NHS with Rowan and Mariam. This is NHS with Rowan and Mariam, uh, part two of three. We've already had two great questions and hopefully provided some helpful insights and thoughts. Representing Clapton CFC, um, our favourite team. La 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 yeah. Fuck me. Okay. Uh, we might have to. Do oh, but this, I mean, I could stay here all night long. Cause, like, let's be honest. Like, no one's message. I don't me. think it's Not been more than an hour that though. I'm waiting for are gonna come. <laughs> are you like checking your fake watch? Like, what no, is this? It's time. I'm, it's time. <laughs> no one's messaged me on my watch. <laughs> no, but like, sort of nothing. Today, tonight is going to be more exciting. Anyways, is what I'm saying. Well, unless the government collapses, in which case that would be great. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. I mean, that is like, the quite funny question we do have that we... That one, but... but okay, we're wait, not doing that we'll one yet. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll okay. see. Because okay. we also don't want to like be on so long that no one ever wants to watch it after yeah. later on, because when it seems very overwhelming if something's an hour long to like tune in. Well, again, we should be better at this and probably cut... Um cut this into shorter videos. We'll do that after the, after the three parts done, we can maybe nice cut it into shorter yeah, videos yeah. when we have I more time. I also think it's nice for you guys to bond because you don't know us, right? And we're just these guys that are like pretending to know it all. I think we do. We're not really <laughs> pretending to know it all. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Well, I had a black stripe. I was crying. Like. <laughs> they, you know, you can sort of see our personalities somewhat. And yeah, I think that's nice. Yeah. But I don't know. But anyways, let's be useful. Okay. Question number three. Straight guy, 29 years old. As soul-crushing as dating apps are, they feel easier than getting to know people in person and asking for dates there. But I have a real problem with messaging back and forth with potential dates for a little bit, then ceasing to reply. Sometimes it's like I make premature judgments that someone isn't right for me. Others, it's like I get anxious about not being a good enough catch. Given that I don't match with many women or get many responses from them in the first place, this seems self-sabotaging. I feel lonely and isolated all the time, basically. So why am I not more enthused to meet new people? What do you think I can do to regain some enthusiasm and confidence for talking to people? Thanks. 
Thank you so much for such such a again. I we're yeah. The quality of questions on this show is just so yeah. much. And you're imbuing us with so much faith, and we really really appreciate that. Yeah, but again, just just making us also not feel alone, and I think mm-hmm. everyone else. Like I don't think you guys, any of you, understand just how much of a political project it is you asking us questions mm-hmm. like this because you would be surprised just how many people would be relating to this yeah. as well. Um, yeah, you are doing like the, the hard, scary yeah. work more than us in a way because you're putting yourself out there and being vulnerable whereas we're just trying to help. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. So thank you. Yes, yes. All right, let's do this. All right. So I have, again, a couple of... Oh my of, God. Well, I don't know. It's just... Um, I thought I was the nerd in this no, relationship. That's why I actually opened the because I have a few things to to um to unpack here. So um, yeah, I don't know. Should I should? I, uh, okay, I guess I'll start just because then you can. Yeah, you have that. notes. I don't have notes. Right. Okay, so I, I will. We will eventually give all the I think uh, sort of advice about you know how to um, you know how to. Um, feel a bit more confident in sort of giving um, sort of um, responding responding and 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 inviting people into dates and all that stuff but fundamentally what I get from your question is that it seems to me like there is uh, an underlying I suppose I don't want to use the word trauma or issue but like a a trust issue I suppose maybe perhaps you've gone through an experience where um, we didn't feel good enough or things didn't go well and, and 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 you know you say you don't you don't feel like uh, asking people question asking people for dates in real life etc and you feel isolated all the time I wonder what are the ways to to confront that first and foremost um, to me that's usually either a tattoo <laughs> or again writing things down and really really dissecting again in my diary as to as to, as to what's going on but um, I don't know if that's something that you are ready to revisit or is that something that, um, yeah, that, that, that could be done uh, um, in general. So, yeah, if there is a bad experience, uh, perhaps it would be good to confront it and release it, you know, as, 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 a, as a ghost. <laughs> um, but in, and then asking for, asking for dates, as, well, I was thinking perhaps, you know, even asking for dates, what, what does it even mean? Perhaps you could... Um, perhaps you could invite people to a social situation where there would be other other friends, so then it wouldn't feel as um, as intense that way around. So perhaps you know a captain game or something like that, but where, where, where there would be other people, so that wouldn't feel as as you know it's just one on one. So then you get to um, so know this person in a crowd of other people. Uh, I was thinking also the way to not waste your time. So for instance, that you know straight away whether that's your person or not, because you know you say you get a few matches, but um, you know, then you sometimes don't know if they're a good ma- enough match for you or not. What if you just have like five questions and then you just post them straight away as like your hello. I don't know whatever they would be, but perhaps they were like a bit more politically inclined or just something that would fascinate you, something quite um, spontaneous. And you would straight away know whether the, you're, you're clicking with this person, whether it's humor, whether it's, you know, something really sort of, yeah, whether it's a click a clicking thing there so rather than be like oh hey how are you how is your day you know in in the dating app you know there'll be something a bit more intriguing and something just like or you know or the, the song that you've been listening to or something you know there's some, like five a list of questions that would be like straight away you can capture them or something so my my i'm gonna give you my tinder secret now that um got me my last girlfriend <laughs> yes it did um I, if I think I might actually like someone, my question, which is not that fun or sexy, but always, always gets actually a conversation starting is saying, how's your day going on a scale of one to 10? Because it's not, Mm. hey, how are you? But they have to actually think about it. And then you're like, oh, why? Why is it an eight? That's so interesting. Why is it a two? Is it really bad? And like, I get some funny responses sometimes. And like, it's just a better way of saying, hey, how are you? And you can use that if you like, because it did get me my last relationship, my last, my second to last relationship. (laughs) Whoops. Um. (laughs) But yeah. Um, My other thing I would say is that I hate messaging back of the force for ages. Like, every now and again, someone comes along and we click and it's like, boo 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 But, um, as I talked about last show, I got so sick of that last time I was doing online dating quite a lot that I just asked people to meet up. 
and I know it like seems like scarier or whatever, but you know within half an hour of talking to someone whether there's anything there at all most of the time. And it actually saved a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of boring shit like, what do you study? Where do you oh work? Oh, that's so interesting. It's like how many times I've told people what I fucking study and I'm like, you don't care, I don't care, none of us care about this. Like the only things I care about are like your political opinions and whether or not you're a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Same, so, but yeah, I mean, sort of goes, goes back. So, so I would just oh, recommend, uh, like, if you think you might like them, just say, hey, do you want to get a beer? I, I, had, I had a situation with the friend that was telling me that they have a, uh, I'm looking for, for a dom in their Tinder bio, and they wouldn't respond to anyone except they went, like, this is what I'm doing to you. Like, none of this, hey, how are you sort of thing, like, this is what's happening. So, again, like, well, I mean, again, depends, I suppose, on the sort of, of uh, website that you're using, because this is Tinder, I guess, but, like, perhaps there is more of a conversational style. With well, like, okay, Cupid, websites. for example, like, you can fill in, like, 100 questions and find out an exact, like, percentage based on your political views. That can yeah. be more or less useful. Yeah. But Tinder is not just sex anymore. Which like is so annoying, actually. Yeah, I know, I know. I wish I was one that was People just sex. People that want a relationship get out of Tinder, honestly. What the fuck? Sorry, I thought yeah. I was. I, I stood on it. I thought I was breaking um, yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but like, yeah, if you can be asked, then I would just recommend asking them for a drink. And if that seems forward, then just be like, all right, sorry, we can talk more banally for ages if you like. I can send you a funny gif. But I'm sorry, I'm just being bitter. But no, like, but and then when you are going on a date, like, make sure you feel like your million dollar self, you know? Like, I mean, I mean, this is really bad because we are, I suppose, sort of following somewhat uh, stereotypical. Uh, notions of what is attractive. Or we something. all judge a book by its cover, like sure, sure. No, maybe we know, shouldn't, but we do. No, no, no. But what I was gonna say, oh, you know, like I guess fit out clothes, stuff like this, you know, something that is of interest to me, and you know, it's not necessarily for you or others, you yeah. know. But, but you know, perhaps your person is like all cosplay or something, which is also another sort of that maybe you should be turning up on something else. I don't know, but um, yeah, like but yeah make sure that you is. feel extremely com- confident on on the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I also just wonder what is it about, what is it about the sort of in real life asking about dates that you are so uncomfortable about? But do you not find like I don't ask people out in real life? Like well, maybe I'll be at a party out. and like end up making out with someone, but it's not like it is in fucking Friends where he sees a cute girl, he goes up to her, and he's like. Hey, do you want to go? No, it doesn't happen anymore. Well, Either you meet someone through I'll friends. I'll take you there, man. Nah, you, like, but in reality, I don't think it's for that, and I'll take you there. In reality, you meet people through friends, and you get casual with each other, and then you might ask each other you out. See, What's I the last time I've been hit on by a stranger? Like re- genuinely, not just like I want to fuck you because I'm drunk at four a.m. I mean, I I don't want to talk. About <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was <laughs> bad politics by me putting no, you on no, a spot like that. I should, I should. But like, it just uh, to me, it doesn't happen anymore. Like. Or maybe I'm just not receptive because I have like it resting has bitch happened face. And it's been great. Yes. Yeah. 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 But like again, but that's because I like assertiveness. Like I like I like people just being like, this is what's happening. I see. I, I into that. But then again, I understand we're putting now, like especially dudes. I guess it's in a position where like they, you know, what if they do that and they'll fucking get slapped? Like that's really bad. Nothing. Because like whenever like a guy will come up to me in a bar and like seem like he's hitting on me, I'm like, there's a not 99. A bar. I'm like, there's a 99 well, percent chance depends. that. There's a 99% chance that we will have nothing in common. And therefore, like, I shut the conversation down straight away, which is really bad. Whereas, like, if I can get, like, for example, my Tinder profile, it says, never shagged a Tory. So, like, people know straight away that that's one of my, that's one of my things. Like, you know, and so, like, there is a bit of, like, I'm not, like, going to be put all my political affiliations there, but there's a bit of an idea that someone will at least know where I'm at. Would you never hate shag a Tory? I would never shag a Tory, no. Like, no, hate Shag. No, not ever. Not even. Like, the son of Jeremy Irons. No, nah, because I think about how he would go and tell his friends about it. And that makes me feel way more gross than how I would tell my friends about it. Like, uh, I, I do not give there. them the right to my there. body. I've gone there once. I've gone yeah, and that's fine. And if you want to Shag a Tory, I will, I will judge you. But I'll pretend not to. <laughs> That's the relationship that we have. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Right. Okay. But again, I can feel. Um, are we are uh, we getting distracted again? No, no, no. I feel like there were. Um, the self sabotage element. Yes. That's quite interesting, and yeah, that kind of goes into what you were saying at the beginning about 
is there something that's happened to you that led to this or is it just a lack of confidence in that you're worried you won't have anything in common and therefore you cut it off which is what I do a lot is I'll cut something off because I'm like we're more likely than not to not have anything in common like or is it that you've got something that happened in your past that you that you're still not over which is okay if someone treats you like shit then of course that hangs around yeah or you're always comparing the other person to them oh because I do that a lot like I compare pretty much everyone to my boyfriend I was with for three years but only to the the him that was with me after a year of getting to know each other of building building something together of like not him at the beginning which was frankly mediocre (laughs) like but he learned and I learned and I compare everything to like him at our high point which isn't fair because every relationship is a learning curve and nothing starts off like the cozy cozy we know each other inside out end game yeah but basically even your ending bit you know so what do you think I can do to regain some enthusiasm and confidence for talking to people you know confidence bit we can talk to you about you know I think we can you you know sort of instill a few tips especially if we got to know a little bit more as to what your aesthetic is and what you're into I think we could give quite a few practical tips and also your mannerisms and your personality like yeah. do you engage with people through humour do you engage with people through political discussion do you en- like but how do you bit. That's yeah. enthusiasm bit I don't know if we can help until you're ready you know like basically you know you just hear about people that are perhaps perhaps like either not over certain relationships or they just want or they just want a particular thing like and they don't want to just hook up with people and that sort of stuff and and they don't want to have enthusiasm about you know, all that are just that. jaded and assume that it's not going to work out which is what my attitude was which is just like there there's no point because it probably won't go anywhere which is also just something like you are gonna have to probably talk to a load of people you don't find it interesting maybe go on dates with a bunch of people you don't find it interesting before you find someone you click with that is just possibly the reality again you are you have somehow found us meaning you are a lefty i would say lefties are horny as fuck so we just come to some lefties and honestly <laughs> but this is again this is practical now yeah no that like, is practical and you have and honestly go maybe, to lefty parties and, gigs like yeah again yeah just sort of i don't know if you're london experience. based but if you're london based there's so much going on also other cities there's so much going on yeah, check yeah. out the social centers that are yes. around yeah so it seems like you have good politics anyways because you seem to be super self-aware etc mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't know Again, and I, yeah, if you if you are IRL with someone, and again, perhaps that that that's that lefty somewhere in in the scene. I, I don't know. I think increasingly because we are so isolated and lonely, all of us a lot of the time. Maybe that's just me and my little bubble that we're sort of in a bit of a like life is too short sort of thing. And if we if we admire each other, there are ways of complimenting each other that I think really open up floodgates of of, of love. You know, I think. We're so, I guess, yeah, oppressed or just like lacking in confidence that you know, a lot of the time you just receive one little comp- compliment from someone, you're like, okay, can I be with you for the rest of my life? <laughs> so don't be afraid to compliment people, you know, maybe. Perhaps, yeah, everyone loves a compliment. Yeah, and rather than saying, like, for instance, that's something I've, I've been told that it was quite nice, um, not, not a critique at me, but that was just in another conversation, rather than saying, like, oh, those jeans look nice go like oh these jeans look nice on you well jeans is maybe a bad example Mm. jeans is a bad example don't use jeans jacket jacket or earrings boots or earrings something non-sexual yeah I'm sorry but basically yeah something that like oh it looks good on you you know so it's a bit more personal yeah or like I love your hairstyle like yeah 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 but with something a bit a bit more rather than it's like that's nice that that's actually it's nice because it's on you you yeah so something along those lines and you chose it so it's also implying good taste like yeah and I mean what I find the biggest turn on which is I think different to you but is like people listening and people including me in conversations and stuff like that so like if you see I don't know if is, is it girls you're into it does it say people potential date potential date okay so it stays neutral but um, okay if like the person you're into seems like lost then like include them and like don't talk down to people like ask like yeah ask people about themselves like the biggest turn on is feeling like you're being listened to (laughs) like and feeling like what you're saying is valid like and that's exciting because then they're talking and you you find out straight away whether or not you're interested in what they have to say yeah 
Dating apps are great and we know huge successes from that. Relationships really. Yeah, I've dated someone for the whole five months till she dumped me for someone else. No, but like I've known some that have lasted years. Yeah, of course, and of course. And all yeah. That stuff. But like um it it does seem like you are not necessarily super happy even in, in that. So if there's something that you can rediscover in IRL and myself as a as a gamer, like I don't fetishize IRL at mm. all. Um, but there seems to be something that you say like I'm just bored of doing that. I wonder yeah. if it's a if it's a boredom thing or if it's something that you're just like you're f- afraid to put yourself out there. And believe me, I I get it. We you know we as well, myself as women, I also have a certain privilege. Like I'm short, you know, I like have a good eyebrow. Like I mean, basically I don't look intimidating. Like probably. Well, I, actually I mean, your eyebrow is pretty intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, basically, I guess it's way, way easier for me to flirt. You know, it doesn't look as creepy, maybe. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, obviously, but like, flashing as a dude is, is, is scary for, yeah. like, different reasons. Yeah. Because there's all the, like, yeah, the stuff. But, but yeah, go, like... And also, like, the biggest thing I'm going to say to you that's a bit of a, like, bummer is, like, be prepared to wait if you're really looking for a genuine connection. I mean, if you're looking for a shag... Easy as pie. <laughs> um, but if you're looking for a genuine connection, like, you might have to wait, like, a while. And that's okay, too. Like, yeah, or, like, hang out in spaces with there. things like, with, with things going on that you're interested in. You don't have to be the loudest person in the room. You don't have to be the funniest person in the room. But if you're listening and you're caring and you're smiling and you make people cups of tea and get people beers and... That always helps. Compliment well. people. Like, you're going to be seen as, like, the nice, cool guy and... Yeah, what, what what else can one ask for? Again, like, I've, yeah. I just heard of a, of, a, of a friend um, going, you know, having a good couple of first dates, and then on the third date finds out they're a huge tanky. <laughs> so that sucked. Um, so, and again, and that was like a waste of time and a waste of messaging. And but it's going to happen. So dispiriting. It does happen, though. Like, yeah. I've been on so many first dates and quite a few second dates. So again, yeah, I guess we're with you. We're yeah. with you. I hope we helped in some way. Please yeah. give us some I'm sorry, feedback. Internet, we, dating is not yeah. necessarily my, my forte as such. So that's why not I mine anymore after my well. thing. But also, um, check out the first question we asked last week if you haven't already, because we talked a lot there as well about like how to make um, how to make like talking to someone online interesting and fun. And so yeah, there might be something there that's useful if you haven't seen it already. Uh, we've been on for an hour. Legend. So I think we should call it a day, right, a okay, night. Yeah, we're doing that. We're going to the toilet. Um, so okay, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna. So just a quick, jokey uh, answer to how will Brexit affect. Oh, are our we not going to answer that seriously next week? Because I think we should. Really? I'm just I'm thinking just about so it. I'm so bored of this whole Brexit bullshit. Well, not bullshit. I know that's affecting real mm-hmm. people's lives. Blah, 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 blah. But um. Yeah, I think we all have fatigue on it. So how will Brexit affect our sex lives? In my sex life. If there will be talk about Brexit, I will fall asleep. So that would that would go. Uh, I just imagine we're all going to become like nineteen fifties American suburban moms. Yay! Oh, and also condoms won't exist. We're going to have to put intestines instead. Well, why won't condoms exist? Are they all because they're all like there aren't British made condoms. Surely there's sure. some like eco activists well, yeah, exactly. that are like we're gonna, making. Exactly, we're gonna have to have intestines. <laughs> no, that. because That's the eco activists are all vegans, aren't they? So it's gonna be oh, like made shit. out of like, but like corn, you know, like corn fiber or something. Yeah, man. Okay, I guess that's that. Well, maybe if we're in the mood and also if we have... Because this is a jokey question, let's be honest. Like, Maybe. We'll see how maybe much... it's a really serious question. <laughs> maybe it's... Yeah. I mean, also, like, you know, if, like, all the people who aren't British leave, that's going to affect our sex life. <laughs> no, because of how we well, are. Yeah. And you're fucked, all of you, then, without us, <laughs> Yeah, I'm <laughs> fucked. <laughs> like, That's what I just have to date British people. Like, the horror. Oh, I don't know. I've... Okay, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, we're so. not going to go there. Oh, yeah. okay, um, right, okay, thank you so much for tuning in yes. to the NHS for Lefty with Rowan and Mariam. Whoa. Yes, follow Rowan. Oh, follow I can't me, stop saying well. that. Well, on... No, I know, but it's really about. Look, basically, I only just went back to Twitter like a month ago, and Mariam feels guilty because she has 2,000 followers and I have a hundred and they're all my mum. Yeah, but you have like 70 tweets. I've got like 6,000 and yeah, I don't have that. But many. she's trying to cut over Do the A cap joke. Which one's that? What one's that? Fuck, I have an A cap joke. The, the cap one. The what one? The bus and the cap one. It's my favorite one. The bus and the cap one. Why do I have these always take a bus? I don't think I made that up. Oh, 
Um, okay. But say it anyway. Why? I might have made this up, but I might not have done it. I think you did. It works on two ways. Why do lefties always take a bus? No. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, why do lefties never take buses? Because they prefer a cab. A cab. But also because lefties are middle class, so it's like yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll you Love week. you so much. So much. Please any more questions, questions. feedback, you. comment, critique. Yes. Love hearts. Share, retweet, we tell all your you. friends. We love you. And not, not just you, you, but in general, people. All of you. Dudes. Mm. Like, okay, bye. Dudes, women, <laughs> non-binary people, we love the lot. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, I have to turn it We're horny and happy. We're not that happy.